Good morning guys and welcome to my channel my dear math today we are going to do the chapter quadratic equations now we have already done quadratic polynomials in the second chapter which is based on polynomials so quadratic equations at least the, in the introductory part is kind of related to the quadratic polynomial so we will start from the relation between a quadratic polynomial and a quadratic equation so that it is easy for you to connect both the chapters now if you are having any doubt regarding the content that I am teaching here today you can drop a comment or you can mail me in the mail ID given below in the description box. Now let us start with quadratic equations. In the second chapter we learned about quadratic polynomial so let us do a recap. What is a quadratic polynomial? A quadratic polynomial is a polynomial that is expressed in this particular form where a is not equal to 0 that was our condition then what did we do we, we had formulas relating the zeros and the coefficients so we knew the sum of zeros and the product of zeros we also learned how to write a quadratic polynomial when the sum of zeros and the product of zeros are given to us and we also learned how to draw the graph of a quadratic polynomial and the point where the quadratic polynomial touches the x-axis is the zero of the polynomial so a quadratic polynomial can have no zeros or it can have two zeros so we learned all those in the second chapter so what is a quadratic equation so from the name quadratic you know that it has got to do something with the power of two when a quadratic polynomial which is in the standard form of ax square plus bx plus c is equated to 0 we get a quadratic equation what, what do you mean by equation equation basically means equal to when something is equal to something else so this equal to 0 under this particular condition will give us a quadratic equation now when i say a is not equal to 0 we have suppose a quadratic polynomial x square minus 5x plus 6 is a quadratic polynomial when this is equal to 0 we get a quadratic equation now if our polynomial is x square minus 5x and we are equating this to 0 will this become a quadratic equation because we do not have the term c or in this particular polynomial or in this particular equation so x square minus 5x is a quadratic polynomial because a is not equal to 0 it is equal to 1 whenever a quadratic polynomial is equated to 0 we get a quadratic equation this is the standard form of the quadratic polynomial that is all you can see that i have written a few equations here so they are all equations because i have equated all of them to 0 now you need to identify which of them or which how many of them are quadratic equations if they are quadratic equations have I written them in the standard form in this way where x square term comes first x term comes next and the constant term comes later and writing it in the standard form I want you to identify the values of a b and c now let us begin with the first one 5 minus x square plus 24 x is equal to 0 you know that 5 minus x square plus 24 x is a quadratic polynomial equated to 0 will give a quadratic equation is it in the standard form this is not in the standard form because the x square term is not written in the beginning even 24x the x term is written towards the last so let us rearrange it so when we rearrange we get minus x square plus 24x plus 5 is equal to 0 the value of a is a minus 1 value of b is a 24 and the value of c is a 5 fine the second one this is the second one x square minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 0 a very straightforward one it is written in the standard form it is a quadratic equation so we just need to write down the values of a b and c okay now x minus 3 into x minus 2 the whole square is equal to 0 whenever you are getting questions like this where you know the term is not written in the proper form it is not in the expanded form you need to open the bracket and multiply wherever necessary so what i'm going to do is that i am going to open the bracket for x minus 2 the whole square so i will get x square minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 0. now i need to multiply with each term so x into x is an x cube minus 4x square plus 4x 
minus 3x square plus 12x minus 12 is equal to 0. And when I am adding minus 4x square and minus 3x square, I get as minus 7. And 4x and 12x, I will get a plus 16x, so on. But immediately you can see the highest power over here is a 3. So this is not a quadratic equation, it is a cubic equation. So I will say that this is not a quadratic equation, it is a cubic equation. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Now, x square minus 2 raised to x plus 4 is equal to 0. Now, let us check the terms. x square. So, our first condition is satisfied. It is having a term containing x square. And here, suppose it is of the form a x square, a is 1. But here you can see that there is a term 2 raised to x. So, what happens when there is a term in this form? This part of x square minus 2x plus 4 is not a polynomial at all. You know the condition for an algebraic expression to be a polynomial. This kind of powers are not allowed. It can have addition, multiplication and subtraction. But it cannot have something like this. So I can say that this is not a quadratic polynomial. Therefore, this is not a quadratic equation. Okay. Now, x square minus x root x minus 5x. Again, we have the same problem regarding this particular term. It is x raised to 1 by 2. It is not a quadratic polynomial, hence not a quadratic equation. x square minus 24 is equal to 0. Now, here you can see that there is an x square term, there is a constant term, but there is no x term. Now, what is the condition for a quadratic equation? A quadratic polynomial has to be equated to 0. What is a quadratic polynomial? Something of this form where a is not equal to 0, but b and c can be 0. Correct? So, in this case, the b value is a 0. So, since this part definitely is a quadratic polynomial and it is equal to 0, it is a quadratic equation. But a is equal to 1, c is equal to minus 24, but b value is equal to 0. Clear? So, now we are done with the condition to identify a quadratic equation, which means the LHS has to be a polynomial, basically a quadratic polynomial. Okay. Now, we move on to the second part. How many roots for a quadratic equation? So, normally the answer from the students that I very often get is 2. Now, is the number 2 correct or not? Now, let me rephrase the question so that you get a better clarity for, the, for answering it. I have rephrased the question. How many real number roots for a quadratic equation? So, what is the extra condition that I added over here? This part. Okay. Now, why have I mentioned real numbers? In grade 10, use the number system that you are studying is real number system. So, real number system includes all the number systems that you people have studied so far, which involve fractions, decimals, integers, rational numbers, all those things. Correct. Now, above real number system, what do you have? Above real number system, you have something called as complex numbers. Now, this is something that you will study in grade 11. So, I am not going to talk about complex numbers at all. So, whenever we are talking about number systems, for grade 10, we are talking only about real number systems. And I am specifically mentioning how many real number roots for a quadratic equation. 2, 1 or 2, 0 or 2 and no real number roots. Okay. What is the correct answer is something that we will be checking right now. Do you remember these graphs? We have studied these graphs under quadratic polynomials in chapter 2. So, this is a quadratic polynomial that touches the x-axis at two points and here touching, touching only at one point and here not touching at all. And why did we learn about these graphs? We learned about these graphs in order to understand that wherever this particular graph is crossing the x-axis, that particular point is called as the zero of the polynomial. Correct? Which means that at this particular point, the equation representing the polynomial is equal to 0. Fine. So, we learned that a quadratic polynomial touches the x-axis at two points and even if it is touching the x-axis at one point, it basically shows it has got two equal zeros. Fine. Suppose you have a quadratic polynomial x square minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 0 and we are drawing the graph of this particular polynomial. You can see that it will touch the x-axis only at one point. The reason being, this is x minus 2, the whole square equal to 0, which is x minus 2 into x minus 2 is equal to 0, x giving 2 and 2 as answer. So, it has got two zeros, but it is touching the x-axis only at one point. 
we learned all this in chapter 2. Now we also saw this condition where it is not touching the x-axis at all which means there is no zero or no satisfactory value which will give the equation of this polynomial a zero value. Okay, so what did we understand from this? This particular polynomial does not have a zero. Now getting back to our previous question, when a quadratic polynomial is equated to zero, we get a quadratic equation which basically means these points are the solutions of the quadratic equation. So from this we can understand that a quadratic equation have can have two zeros as is the case with this distinct zeros and equal zeros or it can have no zeros or no solution at all. So what is the correct answer? How many roots does a quadratic equation have? A quadratic equation can have either two roots or no roots at all when you are considering real number roots. Fine. So for your class which is grade 10, a quadratic equation can have zero roots or two roots. There is no question of a quadratic equation having only one root. Okay. What did we learn so far? We learned the definition of a quadratic equation and how to check whether a given equation is a quadratic equation, whether it is following the rules of being a quadratic polynomial being equated to zero. Now second, we learned how many roots a quadratic equation can have and I explained the reason for it. Now third, because they have they are having roots, quadratic equations having roots, whenever you are given an equation, we need to find the roots of the equation. By roots of the equation, what do we mean? We mean find the value of the variable representing the equation. If the equation is in x, we need to find the value of x. If the equation is in y, we need to find the value of y. Okay. So what are the methods by which we can find the roots of the equation? The first one is check by substitution, which means that suppose you are given a polynomial, sorry, a quadratic equation of the form x square minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0 and someone is asking you, is x equal to 1 a root of this equation? In order to find that, we substitute the value of 1 in the place of x in this equation and check whether this value is equal to 0. Okay. Now, the second method is by factorization. Third one is by completing the square and the fourth one is by using the direct formula. So let us check each one of these methods one by one and under each method let us do a few sums so that you people get a clear idea about what we are learning here. Check by substitution. This is the first method that we were discussing about. So let us do a few sums based on or under this particular concept. Is x equal to 1 a root of the quadratic equation x square minus 3 x plus 3 is equal to 0. In order to check that we need to substitute 1 in the place of x in this quadratic equation. So what will we get? 1 square minus 3 into 1 plus 3 which is 1 minus 3 plus 3 is equal to 1. This is not equal to 0. So, x equal to 1 is not a solution of this particular quadratic equation or not a root. x equal to root 2 is a root is a root of the equation this. So, let us substitute and see. 3 into root 2 the whole square plus 5 into root 2 minus 5 root 2 plus 12. I have opened the bracket. So, you can see that 5 root 2 and 5 root 2 will get cancelled. So, you have 3 into 2 plus 12. This is definitely not equal to 0. So, this is also not a root of this particular equation. Now, check if the equation x square plus root 2 x minus 4 equal to 0 has the following root x is equal to 2 root 2 and x is equal to minus 2 root 2. So, there are two numbers which we have to check in the equation. Let them, let us check them one by one. The first one 2 root 2 the whole square plus root 2 into 2 root 2 minus 4. So, 2 root to the whole square will give you 8 plus 4 minus 4. So, 8 plus 4 is 12 minus 4 is 8. This is not equal to 0. So, 2 root 2 is not a satisfactory solution for this equation. Now, let us check x is equal to minus 2 root 2. You will get minus 2 root 2 the whole square plus root 2 into minus 2 root 2 minus 4. So, here you are again getting 4 2 are 8. Here you, you will be getting minus 4. This is equal to 0. So I can say that 
x is equal to minus 2 root 2 is a solution of this particular equation sorry of this particular equation. So, this is very simple you just have to substitute the value of x in the given equation and see whether this value is equal to 0 fine. Now, let us move on to another type of sum which come under this particular concept. Determine the value of k for which the given value of x is a solution of the equation. So, the equation is given and the solution is also given here also equation is given and the solution is given but both these equations have an unknown variable k ok. We need to find the value of k. So, why is the solution given to us? It is already mentioned x is equal to minus 1 by 2 is a solution which means that when we substitute x is equal to minus 1 by 2 in this particular equation it will definitely become equal to 0 that is why it is called as a solution. So, now let us substitute 3 into minus 1 by 2 the whole square plus 2k into minus 1 by 2 minus 3 is equal to 0. So, you will get here 3 by 4 minus 2k by 2 minus 3 is equal to 0 and when we are solving for k you will get it as 2k by 2 2 and 2 will get cancelled you will get minus k is equal to 3 minus 3 by 4 this is 9 by 4 or you can say the value of k is minus 9 by 4 ok just substitute the value of x in the equation equate it to 0 and solve for k now let us do the second one I am going to substitute x is equal to 2 in this particular equation. So, I will be getting k into 2 square plus 2 into 2 minus 3 is equal to 0. So, I will get 2 square is 4. So, 4k plus 4 minus 3 is equal to 0 or I can say 4k plus 1 is equal to 0 or k is equal to minus 1 by 4. Fine. Same as the previous one, same method we are using, a very simple sum. So, now let us go on to the next sum. Find k and m for this particular equation where x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 3 are given to be the roots. So, there are two unknowns in this particular equation, a k over there and an m over there. Now, let us solve this particular equation by substituting the value of x is equal to 2 in this equation and equating it to 0 and then putting x is equal to 3 in the equation and equating it to 0. When I am substituting x is equal to 2 in this particular equation, I am ending up with an equation in m and k. Okay. Then I substituted x is equal to 3 in the equation. So, I am getting another equation over here. Now, we have two equations in two unknowns. So, we need to find a way in order to solve this particular set of equations. 2m minus 4k is equal to minus 12. Okay. So, I can say that 2m is equal to minus 12 plus 4k. In the second equation, I have 2m minus 6k is minus 27. Since 2m is written as minus 12 plus 4k, I can substitute in the place of 2m, I can substitute this value. So, minus 12 plus 4k minus 6k is minus 27 or minus 12 minus 2k is minus 27. Minus 2k is minus 27 plus 12 minus 15 or k is equal to 15 by 2. Substituting the value of 2m, I am getting the value of k as 15 by 2 and then I am substituting the value of k is equal to 15 by 2 here which means 2m is equal to minus 12 plus 4k. Here I am substituting k as 15 by 2 and when I am solving, I will get m is equal to plus 9. So, I have solved for the value of m as well as k.